Hey guys, hi friends. <laughs> Hello, it's Paula Tiso, creator of My Take, a voiceover studio travelogue, and I'm here out on a Sunday squeezing in an uh, interview with Nick Puga, who is a talented voice actor, on-camera actor, who lives in Florida and comes here for the fall to get in on all the action going on with the on-camera stuff, and he agreed to meet with me. So. I'm here to meet him in uh, a really great part of town that I love to be in, and let's go find out what Nick has to say. You look good. I look good? Okay, good. You don't really have to look good in voiceover, do you? When I first started in voiceover, um, I, I started on a series for Adult Swim called uh, Minority Team. It was a group of superheroes using their racial stereotypes to fight discrimination. Um, and I played El Jefe, and then I did a series of different pilots um, for Comedy Central, for Nickelodeon, and now there's one that's it looks like it looks like after a brief seven years we're gonna it's gonna be something. <laughs> Are you allowed to tell us what that was called? Did you already say? Yeah, no. Um, yes, I am allowed. I think I'm allowed. Um, it's called Cabrito and Chewy. Okay. It is uh, a it is a series basically about a friendship, an unorthodox friendship between a goat, which is played by me, his name is Cabrito, and his uh, best friend, who is a chupacabra. So who those don't know what a chupacabra is, it is a legendary creature from the Latin American uh, folklore, and uh, it's, it's fun. And so it was initially at Nickelodeon, and then uh, the producers ended up buying the rights to it, and now it's got a deal. It's co-produced by, I want to say, Kid Glove Entertainment and La Disney Latin America. So we're excited to find it. just got a 52-episode, 11-minute episodes order, so we're just waiting for that last minute of financing. So it's going to be produced via Brazil, so... You know, elections are going on today, uh, so there's a lot of stuff going on in Brazil that's probably give us a little bit of a delay, but uh, we should be going on soon. You know how they say you are a culmination of the five people you hang out with most? So obviously when I was younger, I was around my family, so I guess they would have to be uh, up there um, as, far as, as far as influence. Um, and I think there was something with my dad being someone who moved to this country uh, without knowing the language and without going to college uh, and with three kids on his back being successful I think that I've always had that in the back of my mind when I moved from Miami to LA that hey if he can do that I think I can move to LA and have a career in acting I just feel it seemed a lot more feasible um, so just as an idea I would say that but I, all in all, I think everyone, I've learned now that you need to learn how to influence yourself. Um, so that is probably the most important thing. If you can't influence yourself, because you can read everything, you can see everything, but if you don't know how to influence yourself, like whether it be in the morning, whether it be like some kind of routine, some kind of song, something that you read in the morning, or something that really uh, motivates you and gets you going, then... Um, you're really not going to do much, even if I, I'm a big, I'm very big on biographies. I, I read a lot of, that's like my favorite, is reading the stories of people. Um, and I'm always interested in that. So, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, sometimes we like to compare our stories like, oh yeah, maybe I'm going to do it like, you know, I don't know, Johnny Depp. I'm going to do Johnny Depp's path. And you realize that's just not going to happen. You have to do your own path. So, um, I would say, myself included, I would have to be one of the most influential people. <laughs> the only one that counts, I would say, right? It's the fear of failure that stops everybody, but if you don't fail, you don't know how to, um, you don't learn. So it's not really failure, it's either you learn or you have success. Uh, those are the two options. Every time you go out and step out of your comfort zone and you do something, you're either gonna have success or you're going to learn, or a combination of both. Uh, that's how I felt yeah pretty much most of the time that's that's how I that's how I feel when I approach something and I'm always curious I guess as an actor you we uh, 
We're always just, we're trying to have a lot of that. Um, we're trying to scream and yeah, <laughs> and yell at the top of our lungs what we're capable of. Uh, no, um, we're trying to live a bunch of different lives. Uh, and so that's why I'm always curious, you know, it's, I'm very big into biographies and hearing different stories and stuff like that. Uh, you know, Paula, <laughs> I will have to say that many people don't know that this is my real accent. And so I had to work on, you know, working on an American accent. And once I did that, then I realized I could do a lot of different things with my voice. So I would say I was developed in Chile. I was manufactured in Venezuela. And then I was imported to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yeah, people that speak Spanish, I can, you know, I can definitely relate. There's some things that just get lost in translation. And so if I'm working with someone that speaks Spanish or if I'm working on a Spanish project, which I do several times as well, um, I know when I'm speaking to the director and producers, I, you understand them on more of what they're looking for. So I guess that's, that's an advantage to have. You know, the Latin market is you know, not going anywhere. It's only growing. <laughs> so um, it's, it's helpful in that sense. And, you know, and to bring different, I think you can bring different characters um, from the whole um, Spanish realm as well. And I think, so I, I, I grew up in Miami. And so in Miami, there's a, a lot of Cubans. And so I, quickly started you know imitating Cubans and then when I moved to LA it's all Mexicans and so I started imitating Mexicans and and through all that um, and no, noticing all the different accents I was able to develop a neutral accent which is what most people want um, unless it's a regional spot for California or a regional spot for Florida which will go more in the Caribbean side or they'll go more on the Mexican side for you know California for the most part, people want a neutral accent. And uh, so by learning all the different accents, I was able to really kind of fine tune the neutral accent that everybody really wants so that they can, you know, not, and many people don't know that there's a lot of different accents in all the different countries. That's, um, and they're drastically different. And they're not different languages, they're just different accents. So it's just like someone speaks, you know, from Alabama is going to speak different from someone from New York. And, you know, a surfer from California. It's like, there's a lot of them. His new world record in the 100-yard dash got him a track scholarship to college. There, he not only broke every previous running record, but he proved to be a voracious reader, a quality that would come to benefit him a few years later in life. What is Nepal? Who is Augusto Pinochet? What is the square root of 79? What is Avogadro's number? And the accolades continue. Now accepting his award for achievements in nuclear physics, Billy Simmons. <laughs> My favorite area uh, of voiceover would be animation. Uh, because you get to really bring a character to life. Also, I have kids, so it's something that they'll be able to watch. And so that's why I, that's, it's a lot of fun and something that can carry on for you know, an extended period of time. Uh, some of the roles people might know me from are, are really those roles where you know, I'd show them to someone and then they'd be like, oh yeah, I remember that. I remember that, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was, when was that, was that, yeah, was that on the, was that a Super Bowl? That was on the Super Bowl, right? Yeah, 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 I remember that one. So it usually goes like that. Um, if I were to try to describe it, I don't know, I, some, like there was a rock, paper, scissors uh, commercial for Bud Light that was pretty big, um, where I was the one who got hit with the rock. Uh, there was a big, uh, another one that people mention a lot is the uh, Burger King one where it was the Angry Whopper. And I took a bite and yelled, HATS! HATS! Uh, that was a pretty big one. Um, so some of the roles are just, yeah, they're guest stars. Or you'd have to see the work. You'd well, have yeah. to visit nickpuga.com oh, well, in order to really see the visual. <laughs> what about that time about a once? Time upon a once? There was a big 
commercial called? Oh yeah, yeah, Time Upon a Once. Uh, that was a that was a big commercial for GE that was actually in uh, movie theaters. Um, you know, that's something interesting. I thought that was, you know, be to be do not so well in school and then play <laughs> an engineer for a GE. I mean, kind of reached the pinnacle of uh, how smart I can play. Uh, <laughs> Um, that was fun. Uh, that was uh, directed by Andreas Nielsen, who is uh, an amazing uh, director and, um, and just DP. He's, he's very good with visuals and stuff. He's done a ton of music videos, like with Beyonce and and everybody. You name it. Um, so that was really that was an exciting one to work on. Um, why I like on camera commercials? It's it's short. I won't. You know, I'm not going to be uh, tied to a contract for 14-hour shoot days. <laughs> um, there's a quick turnaround, and I, you know, at the beginning, I would say I had, I did, prior to doing commercial work, I did have a little thing about it where I, I struggled with, um, with participating um, in it. Um, but then I realized, and I kind of uh, adjusted my mind a little bit, where hey, I'm here solely to make people laugh. And when it became like I was there just for, to entertain and not necessarily I'm here to sell this product, that really helped me, you know, free myself up and, and have fun, and, uh, which is mainly what I have when I do them. So that helped me. Because um, sometimes when I got too... Uh, into the in, into the whole production and uh, inside of it, it was just I, I I held back when I shouldn't have. How do I maintain a work-life balance? Yes. Well, Paula, <laughs> I married a very special person. I like that answer. <laughs> uh, and uh, and she does it all. No, uh, <laughs> but no, she helps. I you know. I don't know if I do. I, I do the best to my ability. I I, I feel I'm pretty good. I, I you know in overall I feel like I'm with my kids more than ninety percent of dads out there. So um, that makes me feel and I'm I'm very I'm very in my kids' life a lot. So I don't really have any you know super you know regrets or I don't really feel bad. Uh, if I make a trip out here because you know what I'm doing out here is for them too and showing them you know that I still do what I love to do and you know and it's possible in just a couple weeks here to have the rest of the year with you know and be at home is um, is something that it's important for them as well for me and my sanity we should not be guided by our fear. Um, many people, I, I think, um, once I put family first, uh, that really just put a whole new perspective. It was scary to do um, in the middle of buying a house remotely from here. I was like, what am I doing? This is nuts. This is where I make my living. Um, but you find a way. And so there's, um, there's a lot of work in Atlanta. I felt like I would be connected with agents there. I would be auditioning and self-taping for Atlanta. There's a small market in Florida. You know, I'll see what's there. And I found a way to add my value in Naples locally through um, teaching. So it's not something that even I, um, I did not initially go to Florida and say, I'm gonna go to Florida and I'm gonna teach here, but just different things you know, opportunities come up if you're looking uh, for thing for your best interest for your family. Uh, you will find something that will be rewarding enough for you to actually um, to do. And I still come back, and I still have my relationships with uh, with people here in, in LA. So, uh, and they're hearing my voice, you know, on the internet. So really. You know, if, if someone out there, Paula, is thinking about the move and considering it, 
um, I've, I've come across a number of other actors who have done it as well and they live outside here they just want a little bit more peaceful vibe and it's very hectic in here and um, and and looking for a better lifestyle and if you take you can't you can't do well if you're not taking care of yourself and for me taking care of myself means first and foremost taking care of my family and if they're good then that fuels me up and then I can go ahead and do whatever it is that I need to do. How do I maintain relationships? Um, yeah, I keep in contact. Um, anyway, I can't. Social media is one that uh, is a great way. I, there's people that I work with that I, I'm, I keep in contact through social media. Um, you know, phone conversations still. I stay in contact. I let them know. <laughs> yeah kind of odd these days that people are using telephones but yeah talking with people is important um, and I, I like when you find someone who you know knows you knows you and knows what you do well you just got to grab on and just stay to stick to them you know very long integrity is very very big with me integrity and and loyalty goes along with that and I've always uh, I, there I have been represented by mit several different people over the years but they were they were all given you know really fair and you know I didn't you know just always just turn on a dime because things weren't like working out it was really a kind of feeling out and communicating and if you have the right communication you know things can go really well for you where if you don't you know you'll just get lost in the mix I think and so I was lucky enough to find on the especially on on camera commercially early on only going through a couple different ages to find someone who is very that I've had a working relationship for about 15 years now so that's a long time uh, in in this business and and that's someone who I trust and so when I do make trips out to LA I know that they're gonna be worth my time uh, that they, I know I'm going they're going to either make the extra call or they're gonna make the extra effort not necessarily a call but they're gonna make the extra effort to make sure that things go that I get the opportunities that I'm that I get the opportunities that I'm right for that's, that's the second part of my question it's yeah like, how do you time it I mean because it's like you're here um, for a certain period of time, how do you time it that it's a busy time while you're here? I mean, how, it, does, does that, how do you do that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> very carefully. So I live in Florida primarily. I put family first. I thought that was really important. I wanted my kids to be closer to their grandparents and family and to have a better lifestyle. And that was just the right choice. I put them first. And, and I still have my relationships in Hollywood and I come out at certain seasons that I know it's going to be busy and that is for me the fall season where I know it's going to be busy and a good thing about voiceover is that most of the stuff is you know we self-record from home so I self-record from home that's happening on the on-camera side too as far as film and television we are self-taping sometimes I was here in LA living here and casting directors would still want me to put myself on tape like because this day and age there's so many producers that are producing so many different shows they can't all be in one room it's just not going to happen they'd rather just see all the tapes and book them up tape um it's not there yet commercially yet because there's such a quick turnaround but i feel like the future's right there uh i feel like it's it's the next step and that would be that would be great <laughs>